Welcome to Totally Primal. I'm your host, Dave, and I'm here in the Primal Eats kitchen. Behind me, you're gonna see the Woodstone pizza oven. Basically, it's just a big flat rock that's superheated that we cook our pizzas on. You can do a bunch of different items in there, but today we're gonna focus on our pizza dough. Not everybody at home is a baker. I certainly wasn't a baker, but I was really excited when I had a professional come in here and teach us all of the trade secrets of how to make a pizza dough. What we do is we make a poolish, and a poolish is actually a fermented part of the dough that we add to the whole recipe. So we're gonna get right into it, and I'm gonna show you how it's done. So as I mentioned before, we use a poolish in our pizza dough. That's P-O-O-L-I-S-H. Yes, it is a real word. And what that is is equal parts of water and flour, and we add some yeast to it, we mix it all together, and we let it sit overnight at room temperature. What that does is it ferments everything, gets that yeast activated, and it creates this depth in the flavor of your crust that makes it primal. So let's get it put together right now. So I've got my yeast and water put together in here, and I've got that mixed together already, and I've got my flour ready. So I'm just going to add those two ingredients, and we're going to get that mixed up. I know it doesn't seem like much, but this is all you need to make some about four pizza dough balls at home. Now we're done mixing it, and it kind of appears like a dough texture, but more of a wet dough, because we did use equal parts of water and flour in there. So we're going to cover that up. Not too tight, but just loosely cover that because it's going to ferment and it's going to create some gases and going to expand, but we're going to leave that on the counter for at least eight hours. All right, now let's put the rest of the pizza dough together. Very important, first thing you want to do is add your water to your bowl. We want to do that because we want to add the yeast to the water next and let that mix. So now that we have our water and our yeast mixed together, I'm going to shut down the mixer. And it's very important to have the water in there first because if you add the water afterwards and the flour is already sitting in the bowl, you're going to get clumpy dough. So I'm going to add the flour next. And then we start mixing. Now what we're watching here is we're waiting for it to start forming a dough. Once it starts to incorporate itself a little more, then we start adding our other two ingredients, which is salt and that poolish that we made earlier that should be nice and bubbly and it's even going to smell nice and yeasty, that's going to give you a real flavor punch. So we're going to take our poolish that we made earlier and now you can see the dough is starting to form. So now this is the point where we want to start adding the poolish. So we're going to go ahead and scrape that in there. Poolish is in. Let's get the mixer going again. Now, we don't want to add our salt too early. This is about the time when the dough looks like that. We're going to start sprinkling the salt in. Once you see the dough start to crawl up the hook like that, then we know we're getting close. So I'm going to give it about another minute here, and then I'm going to shut her down. Perfect. Now it's starting to fall off like that. So now we got it there. We're going to shut it down. As you can see here, it's a nice dough consistency. And what we're gonna do is just kind of pat that down. And then we're gonna get a wet cheesecloth or a wet towel and set that over the top and let it rest for about an hour. Now that our dough is ready, what I'm looking for is 15 ounce dough balls. So again, I'm gonna use my kitchen scale now. And the first thing you wanna do is get some olive oil. Cover your hands with olive oil because it's going to be a little sticky. This definitely helps and it adds to the flavor of the crust. So I'm going to take a bit of dough. It's a little heavy, so we're going to cut a little off. 15.1, perfect. Now I could just cut this in four because I know about how many dough balls I had, but we're going to go about like that. A little over, but we're going to make that work. We're just going to cut that one in half, see where we're at. 14.4, 12, donate a little air. That one's a little smaller, so this will be one for the kids, all right? 
These 15 ounce dough balls are gonna make a 14 inch pizza. That's what we serve here at Primal Eats. If you have a little bit smaller of a dough ball, it doesn't matter. So we take these balls right here, and there are two methods that we use to make the dough balls. First method like this. We just roll them around like this. Keep your fingers apart. You're not making a fist. You're not holding it tight. You're going like this and letting it roll inside your fingers. And then we take them. And there we go. Two perfect dough balls. The second method we can do is you take one dough ball and you just fold it over the top, just like that. You keep folding the ugly end right there underneath itself. And we keep going and we're working the air bubbles out. I kind of say it kind of looks like a Pac-Man ghost. You want all the, the bottom part right there. And then keep the ugly side on the bottom and put it down like that. So now that we have our dough balls made, this is gonna take one more day to sit in the refrigerator because we're not gonna be able to use it till tomorrow. It needs to continue fermenting to get that poolish that we incorporated in there and all those flavors to come out. So that's right, our dough takes two days to make before it reaches your plate. But that's how we feed your instincts. I'm David, and thank you for joining me today on Totally Primal, Feed Your Instincts, Primal Eats. Today, we're gonna to be sharing with you our pizza crust, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> People can't, you walked in the kitchen and you screwed me up.